What's up everyone? Welcome to today's video. Welcome to the Video Game Fight School channel. Thank you very much for tuning in. So today we're going to be looking at the potential gameplay reveal for the next Gotham Knight or character reveal. And I think this is something that we kind of have to maybe start putting out a few things that we would like to see. Now, one thing I've noticed is the developers pay very, very close attention to the community. And I think for them, their job is quite easy because this Gotham Knights community is still a community that's in the works in terms of building. They're not necessarily a lot of people in this space. So whenever we make our concerns known, I think the developers have a very, very easy way to be able to categorize a lot of that. They can look on Discord, they can look on the videos that they post, they can look on Twitter, and they're even engaging the community on Twitter as well with some of their comments and some of their responses. And I think they seem to have their legs in the right direction. So for now, we're looking over to the next character trailer reveal. And my guess is we're probably going to be seeing Batgirl or Red Hood. Red Hood had been the one that a lot of people had a, a sort of a contention with because of the way his gameplay was presented at that particular reveal trailer for Red Hood and Nightwing. But whoever we're going to be seeing next, I'm hoping that the developers are able to give us gameplay in 60 frames per second. Now, for those of you who may have noticed, the gameplay that we've seen has been in, I think, 30 frames per second. Now, it's a little understandable because whenever you're clipping some of your cutscenes or actions from the engine, the way the sequencer renders in Unreal Engine, I think its default is somewhere around 24 FPS. I don't know if you can go up to 30. I haven't necessarily messed with it, but we've seen that the gameplay reveals that they've done have been in that frame quality. Now, in a past video, I said that this is something that a lot of people have cited and said, well, if we can see this gameplay, then why is it not able to run on the PS4 and the Xbox One? And the answer is you are more than likely correct. That frame rate can run, if not even better, on a PlayStation 4 Pro and even some of the Xbox Ones that were actually released later on. But the game itself does have a network component to it which in my opinion probably is what's going to have to cause for your PlayStation 4 and Xbox One to not be able to run it at the best experience. If you guys were paying attention in 2019, Tom Clancy's The Division 2 was released and the PlayStation version was horrible. I mean, I'm talking there were lighting issues. People could not see where they were going in the game. I mean, and it's a game that has a day-night cycle. So sometimes at night, the game is just so dark you cannot even see anything. People were turning their brightness settings up. There were all kinds of different bugs because those consoles are literally 2013 laptop hardware. So one thing I think the developers need to do is continue from now henceforth in bringing out their gameplay presentations at 60 FPS in order for the community to recognize that this is the quality that they're trying to meet and the PS5 and Xbox series consoles are able to capture that quality. Another thing of note is if you've actually played the PC version of Batman Arkham Origins, which is the last game that Warner Brothers Games Montreal made, the game can be scaled in 4K. So some of these features would probably be nice to somewhat sell it as a game that's coming out in this current gen of consoles. Now, I've always known that this current gen of consoles are basically mini PCs just hiding in a plastic container and saying that they're consoles. But in reality, they are able to do the things that gaming PCs have been able to do for years. So if the developers are bringing out another gameplay sequence, I believe that a 60 FPS gameplay sequence for, say, Red Hood and Batgirl would be a very appropriate in this particular time. Now, keep in mind, though, that if right now their production requires for them to be able to do that in only 30 FPS at the meantime, then I think it's fine. There's nothing wrong with that if they're maybe putting their trailers together and their cutscenes together. But this is something that I think needs to be scheduled for a later date so that we can actually see how much this game is going to look. And believe it or not, some of these technical showcases really do sell a video game in a very different light. I remember seeing the developers in a Marvel Guardians of the Galaxy technical showcase actually discuss a lot of the technical aspects of their game. So for the PC community, they were able to look at DLSS and some of these other features that allow for you to have an enhanced experience while playing the game. I wonder if the Gotham Knights developers are going to do a showcase like this so that we can start seeing what this game is about. One reason that a lot of people are still in a position thinking that, okay, this game seems like it could run on the past generation is because 
the graphics so far, in a sense, are somewhat comparable to what Batman Arkham Knight was able to achieve. Now, if you look at Arkham Knight on console, it runs on 30 FPS. There still has not been a 60 FPS patch, which I'm quite disappointed that Rocksteady or even Microsoft have not been able to unlock its frame rate. Maybe this lends to that credence that there might be a remaster for Arkham Knight. But if you look at it on PC, where it gets played at 60 FPS or higher, you're going to notice that there's an intense quality difference, intense gameplay and response difference when you're playing on those higher frame rates. This is why most fighting games, because of responsiveness and so on and so forth, like to be rendered at the full 60 frame per second, regardless of where you're playing it. But those games don't necessarily have to deal with, say, an entire world or other factors. There are usually maybe two or four characters or maybe six characters fighting in front of some kind of a backdrop with maybe some animations here and there. So those games can actually get you that 60 frame per second run on whatever platform you're playing on. But when it comes to an open world game and when it comes to a game that is an adventure game with visual effects and sounds and all of those things that are quite unique and dynamic, then you're starting to have yourself more performance requirements. And these PCs or so-called current gen consoles are going to have to be pushed to their limits to get you that particular kind of performance that you paid for. I mean, five, six hundred dollars, whatever it is you paid is no small amount. So it'd be nice for the developers to actually show you that your machine is capable of rendering this game at the highest possible quality. But anyways, I wanted to go ahead and highlight these little things because I felt they are some of the things that really do add up to presenting this game in the best possible light. Now, again, I'm not demanding anything. I'm just saying that if it's possible for the developers to get it out there for us, then most definitely it's really going to resonate well. But anyways, that's it for me in this video. I really appreciate your time and audience. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully we'll talk very soon. Peace out.